What's up Gotham Chess subscribers? I usually don't make videos like this, but since everybody's stuck at home right now and there's a ton more online chess being played, I decided, why the hell not? Let me give this a shot. So I'm gonna be starting a little series on game reviews. And the one I wanna bring to you today is between two online speed demons, Grandmasters Daniel Naroditsky, and of course, Hikaru Nakamura. This game was close to being Daniel Naroditsky's immortal game. It is a beautiful game where he turns back the clock, although it was Blitz, and plays crazy, romantic-style chess, sacrificing piece after piece. Let's jump into it. So Daniel started the game with d4. After g6, e4, the players went back to an e4 system. This is called the modern defense. There is a lot of ways to play it. Daniel chooses the most aggressive, with the three pawns in the center and the pawn on f4. Ikaru responds b5, black likes to play on both the king side and the queen side. Players get out to this position, and Daniel immediately goes for a4, challenging the pawn on b5, letting it come forward and reroutes the knight back to e2. Daniel then will maybe bolster the center with c3. Knight d7, c3, c5, castles bishop b7. And now, in this position, white has done a very good amount of developing. He has full control of the center. So what do you do in a position like this? Uh, once you're fully developed and your opponent is lagging a little bit, there are moments where you can strike in the center and maybe go go to open up the lines against the opponent's king. So Daniel plays f5. Hikaru understandably goes to lock the position. But with his last move, you'll notice that four of his pawns are on the dark squares, which means that the light squares are up for grabs. And so Daniel plays bishop c4. He doesn't take either of the pawns, or this one. Instead, he improves the positioning of his bishop, giving this away in the process, but taking that is very dangerous, because you would be opening up the e-file. So Kikaru plays g takes f5, another move that does not address his developing problems, and Daniel plays knight g3, baiting this pawn to come forward or potentially take, and then the knight will hop into f5 or h5. Daniel is creating an initiative. f4, knight f5, and bishop f8. So what? This is move 15 now for white. White is fully developed, his pieces are coming out, He's the only down a pawn, but all of Black's pieces almost are on the back row. So there's a couple of ways you can improve your position here, but this wouldn't be a my game of the week or game of the day if there wasn't sacrifices. The first kaboom. Knight takes c5. What? This move looks like it doesn't do a damn thing. What does that do? Well, Hikaru obliges. He takes back. Now, he could have taken this with the pawn. Had he done that, there was a crazy variation that could have come up. I mean, Daniel can play queen b3. But he can sacrifice his bishop here, lead a massive attack on this king, take back the pawn, and, you know, in a blitz game, you have to make split-second decisions. The engine gives this 0, 0, 0, like it always does, and some crazy perpetual can occur like this, but, and with knight h4, king g7, but Hikaru recaptured with the knight. Daniel took, took, and now the second kaboom on f7. Of course, black has no real other legal move, so he has to take back. We see queen h5, king e6. So what's the count of material? Well, Daniel is uh, down a piece, but there's a black king on e6. Well, how do you get to it? Generally, when you sacrifice pieces, you have to continue to make threats. Well, here comes the third kaboom. Bishop takes f4. The third sacrifice in the last four moves. Hikaru does not take this one. If he did, the idea that white had was to go rook ad1, and now all of his four pieces are swarming. Black has five pieces on the back row. The sixth one is on the second row, basically, second row for him. The most advanced piece that he has is his king, and that's generally bad chess practice. It's probably completely lost if you go for this. The queen will get in, the rook will take, you'll set up some attack on the king, and there's not going to be a good way to stop this. So knight f6, attacking the queen, and now Daniel plays a beautiful move, queen h3. Sometimes when you have to retreat, it's hard to find a place to get maximum danger. For example, queen e2, queen c4. People like to think of the same piece moving, but don't forget that your pieces work together. Queen h3. Now, here, again, engine is crazy, so it says that the best thing to do is to leave the king where it is and to take the bishop. Hikaru plays bishop takes e4 and reads all of these discovered check opportunities as not too much of a threat, but he missed the deadliest one. The double check. Arguably the most powerful tactic in all of chess. The king moves, queen e6 check, king g7, bishop e5. Devastating threat as bishop takes f6. So black plays bishop e7. 
And now Daniel plays a beautiful move. A lot of you would be thinking the knight is hanging, so I need to move it to f5. You wouldn't even be wrong. But Daniel plugs his last piece into the attack, creating the threat of taking because of the pin, as well as the threat of rook lifting to get to the king. After cd4, rook e4, rook f8, rook g4 check, all possible due to this pin, king h8, it came time to harvest the fruits of his labor. Daniel here had to find the knockout punch. He failed to do so. The right continuation, and I don't say this in any way uh, to disparage Daniel, I mean it's, you know, chess is hard, blitz is hard, playing Hikaru is hard, I am nowhere near of his caliber, but rook takes d4 is the key. Because this move attacks the queen and disconnects it from the defense of this knight. Anywhere the queen moves, you will be taking, actually you will not even be taking with the bishop, you have to take with the rook first. This is super important, because if you take with the bishop, it's check, but upon recapturing, the queens see each other, and you don't want that with white. The difference here is that if you take with the rook first, this is the check. The queen cannot take you, and in this position, the rook comes to g4, you win the black queen with queen g6, and uh, my money is on Mr. Naroditsky winning this position. But Daniel could not resist sacrificing a fourth piece with rook takes f6. Rook f6, and a fifth piece, kind of, sort of, for the purposes of this video, um, we will say it's a fifth sacrifice. Queen g8 and queen e7, and it looks almost perfect. Almost perfect. Bishop f6 is coming, and there's no way to stop it. But there's this menacing move, queen g6, which gives away the rook, but somehow the king finds shelter on g8. And all of a sudden, like a good, good soap opera with a lot of plot twists, the attack has faded. Or has it? Daniel gives a couple checks, and here needed to make this capture, creating the threat of bishop c5, followed by queen e4, winning the rook. Instead, he played the natural queen d4. And the players played these, uh, these next moves very quickly. Hikaru sacrificed yet another pawn. It's bishop and three extra pawns for the rook. And queen trade, b4, Daniel started flying with his pawns. He was less than a minute here. This part of the game, not a crazy amount to analyze. Just watch. And all of a sudden, the pawns are stopped. Hikaru, very nice little technique there to get in the rook, target the pawns, given that they're on the opposite color square of the bishop. If the pawns were even advanced a little bit and the bishop could guard them, white would probably be winning. So Daniel decides to save the most advanced pawn. Objectively speaking, this position is a draw, but I would not stop it here. Players proceeded to blitz out the rest of their moves. At this point, Hikaru had about 30 seconds, Daniel 15. Both players obviously playing with no increment. It is just a friendly blitz game. And Hikaru decided, well, this is a draw. Daniel will be pushing his pawn and I have to sacrifice my rook for it. But this is blitz. I need to flag the guy. Those of you that are unfamiliar with that what it means, it means to beat the guy on time. A dirty flag is when you flag somebody in a completely equal or lost position. And as you're about to see, Hikaru chooses not to take the queen. He does that because at this point, Daniel just had a few seconds, maybe six or seven. And Daniel started catching Hikaru. Queen f5. The thing about the rook and the king is that they need to be close together in time scrambles, or else this happens. You lose the rook. Daniel proceeded to have about 15 moves played in the next two and a half seconds. He did that by pre-moving out the next 10 moves. And this is what happened. It is complete pandemonium. I know. Now what you're supposed to do here is find a way to move the bishop away. Good bullet trick. So that you never cut off the wrong diagonal and accidentally stalemate. And then you would try to bring the queen and the king together. But Daniel, a little bit short-circuiting at this point, 70th move of his game, proceeded to make a bunch of nonsense moves. And in trying to flag Hikaru, accidentally stalemated him. That's why the title of the video is Daniel Naroditsky's nearly immortal game against Hikaru. Of course, in the opening, absolute brilliancy. Daniel sacrificing piece after piece, creating absolute havoc around the Black King, unable to find the killing blow, which was going up and to the right, but then making a quick dip to the left, dislodging the queen away from the knight. But what can you do? It's three minute blitz. And that concludes my first ever game review session. Hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you think. Very exciting games. If you have any games that you come across, either online or, I don't know, that you play against your dog or cat in this crazy time of self-quarantine, suggest it to me. Find a way to get in touch. Follow me on Twitter, if you don't already. 
also on Twitch, if you don't already. And uh, remember to like the video and subscribe, if you don't already. Drop a comment as well. I'll take uh, all of your considerations, and I'll be back with a second video soon.